Oh. <laughs> I was waiting for this moment <laughs> when I got the hiccups. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today, we close out another season with Paul Dano. He's an actor you know from acclaimed performances in films like The Batman, Little Miss Sunshine, Prisoners, There Will Be Blood, and many more. You can also catch him in his role as Burt Fableman in Steven Spielberg's new semi-autobiographical film, The Fablemans. Currently in theaters, Paul Dano, welcome to the show. Hey, man. How's it going? Uh, it's going good. I'm excited. I'm nervous. Nervous? How are you around spicy food before we get uh, started? So I, I, I like spicy food. I, I like, you know, I like Szechuan food. I like Indian food. Um, I don't eat a lot of wings with hot sauce, but, you know, I like spicy food okay. I had to cut back a couple years ago. I wasn't sleeping so well. You know, the doctor said maybe a little less spicy food. Easier to cut back on a little spicy food than it was on the wine. So right. I, I chose to, to, cut, to cut back on the spice, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Do you just take a bite or do you try to chow the whole thing? Is there a, is there a, um, are there rules of the game? There, you know what? We're in the abstract over here. There are no rules to the game, but I kind of mirror the guests. Like mm -hmm. wherever you go, mm -hmm. I try to match whatever experience you're bringing to this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is yummy. This is nice. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I imagine it was a uniquely singular experience for an actor to play Steven Spielberg's dad in a film directed by Steven Spielberg. How did you sort through the meta-ness of that performance, you know, working alongside a filmmaker as they unpackage their own life and artistic mm -hmm. ambitions? To work with him in itself, I, I haven't been that nervous for a meeting in a long time. And, and I remember my wife being like, who are you meeting with? You know, why are you acting this way? And I was like, Steven Spielberg. She was like, okay. <laughs> and then he tells me what it's about in the first Zoom. and. You know, when I first met Stephen, his dad had only passed about eight months beforehand. So you could really see in his in his eyes, you know, what he was talking about. And that really kind of made me, um, you know, made my heart sing. I was like, oh, wow, Stephen's got a lot on the line here. And he was an open book. I mean, the family archives were available to us, home videos, I mean, photographs. You know, it was insane to be sort of let into Stephen's heart and in his life in that way. I told Steven on the last night of filming it would take me a few years yet to, to fully process, you know, what, what we all just uh, did together and that, that he would ask me to play his dad, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's yummy. It's nice. I can feel my, you know, so I sweat when I eat anything. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. I think that's usually to do with, like, quantity and pace, though. So <laughs> we're, we're taking it easy. But I especially sweat when I... <laughs> Eat spicy food, so I'm curious, curious where we'll go Same here because I just just felt the like the waterworks the forehead, fly. the scalp, <laughs> the, you know, yeah, um, yeah, you know. it's happening, it's yeah. happening, yeah, it's coming, yeah. So you've been at this for a long time, beginning in adolescence, being on the Broadway stage with Inherit the Wind, and then by the time you were 16 years old, winning an Independent Spirit Award for your performance in LIE. What influence did Paul Schrader's book Transcendental Style and Film have on you at a young age? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Nice. So I grew up, I think when I wanted to be an actor, I think I thought it meant being on the stage. I grew up in Manhattan, where we are today. So I remember going to the theater when I was a kid. And the movies I liked, I was obsessed with Jim Carrey when I was a kid, but I'm not that, you know, but that was like, you know, I love Terminator 2, right? And on Halloween, but like, I'm not, you know. So like, I think Paul Schrader's book, it really opened the door to foreign film, which really just sort of opened the door to like becoming like a movie dork. It opens up the language, right? Like if you, you you know, you you try different hot sauces and like the language of, you know, a hot sauce. The whole spice, world opens up, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like just the more you know, um, you get around to. I think the 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 yeah, uh, the more fun it becomes. This is the sauce you like. I do like this one. You like this one. All right. But do you like it? The question. I do like it. It's 
good. This is fun because you know it's really um you uh, start feeling sparkly, right? <laughs> it changes you like yeah, physiologically. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah you're going through it, yeah, and it's feel, already starting, Paul. It's already starting. I feel sparkly. <laughs> yeah. How did Nirvana's "Something in the Way" like shape your interpretation of the Riddler? "Something in the Way" is a great song, and I listened to a lot of Nirvana. And but yeah, that chorus for me was it's like, what are we all trying to, you know, something in the way. What are we all trying to get through, you know? Um, and I think it's about the two sides of trauma. And one person had, you know, a little more um, resources to deal with their trauma, Bruce, Wayne, and and my guy just didn't quite have, you know, um, uh, didn't didn't have the nurture, but he probably didn't didn't have the nature either. If we're, <laughs> if we're being real, yeah, yeah. All right, are you ready to move on here to yeah. sauce number four? You're doing great, by the way. This one is the Los Calientes Barbacoa. Okay. Mm. That wing was nice, still crunching. I like that one. Yeah, so far these two are probably the ones I would take home of the four. I shouldn't say that, we're not gonna. No, you know what though? We're sending them all home with you anyway. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Can't wait to have a couple friends over and say, <laughs> "Now you guys, now you guys." Yeah, you should have like it. a viewing party for your episode. Have the friends over and see how they match up, you know, to the control experiment with you on the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So that one's growing still. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And wh who knows the cumulative yeah. effect that we have going on too? You know, who's to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's to know what's going on? Yeah, but it's happening. That's interesting though. That one for me so far has the longest after. Mm -hmm. Not even the heat, but just the the taste, just the, yeah, the whole a, the whole thing. The trail it leaves the behind. The longest trail so far, yeah. So I love this quote of yours. Some characters lead from their chest or their head more or their dick more. What's the difference? Or can you explain the difference between <laughs> a character who would say lead with their chest versus one that would lead with their dick? So right, I mean, well, what do you? Well, how do you interpret if somebody who leads with their dick? Well, so no, really, like you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's, I think it makes sense. Here's, right? here's, here's how it aligns for me, actually. So we had Kate Blanchett yeah. here earlier this year, and she was talking about how when she played Bob Dylan, the thing that snapped the character mm. in focus for her was just putting like a heavy weighted sock between her legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. So it makes me think about exactly. the ways in which these like sort of. Yeah. Small things can like snap yeah. a character into place, and then that had a direct dick connection. And yeah, then I yeah, saw yeah. this quote, and yeah. then I was like, "Oh, I wonder what Paul's perspective on the whole thing is." Yeah, no, that's <laughs> absolutely it. I mean, it's as simple as that. It, it can be. I mean, and, and I think physical is even better because that kind of just gives it to you, right? It's like it, wearing different shoes makes me feel a little different, right? This film, Prisoners, was very much about the opposite of that. It was somebody who was frozen, you know, trauma in the past. And so the body is, you know, he carried his stuff in his, like, up here more, where somebody, uh, I don't know. I think it makes sense without explaining it, though, no? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's yeah, yeah, an yeah. actor thing, you know, like, it's yeah, a little yeah. bit in the abstract, like, you know. But it is. And I guess that's why you, you, you do it, right? Because it's, like it's just allowing some kind of little access that maybe is, is actually not meant to be like intellectualized and, and <laughs> overly articulated. It's more like, oh, like rather than the, let, let's just go there to the, the to whatever physical component you know feels helpful. Makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to move on here? Yeah. You're at the halfway point already. Okay. You're crushing it. Oh, this one's oily. Yeah. So okay. there's oil-based sauce here with Fly by J. I mean, I love a Szechuan peppercorn. When you get the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you get the real, you know, peppercorn, <laughs> that tongue thing that happens. But this one, and it's because of the oil, my lips are, yeah. you know, feeling it. Where does performing You Still Believe in Me alongside Al Jardine and Brian Wilson, where does that fall on your list of musical accomplishments? Nice, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cool. I mean, I love that song. I chose it. They said, what song do you want to sing? And for some reason, that track really, gets me. I think it's the second track on Pet Sounds. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can remember this point, but maybe my favorite experience I've had as an actor, uh, Love and Mercy, and I think it's because of the music. You know, I was nervous, but I think it went went well enough. Uh, Brian was a super sweetie to me. Is it true that you met Bong Joon-ho when he was jumping up and down in the crowd at a show that your band was performing oh, at in nice. Brooklyn? I, 
Actually, yeah, it is. <laughs> so, so I was a big fan of his. Um, he had a film called Memories of Murder quite some time ago. <sighs> 2003, I can't remember the exact year. It's incredible, it's a fucking great film. It's a really good film. And then he was in New York to promote his film called Mother. So this is like 2008, 2009, maybe 2010, I don't know. And uh, I had a friend who knew him and was at his screening and then they were like, oh, we're gonna go see Paul play afterwards. And I was playing and I saw a large Korean man dancing in the back of the room and it turned out to be Bong, who I was a huge fan of. And we got to hang out afterwards and then we started like a pen pal relationship. And then eventually a few years later, like we got together when he was in Brooklyn once and he showed me a drawing of a pig. Man, said, this is gonna be this movie, you know? And I was like, the, just the drawing of the pig, I was like, that's, you know, I, I'm there. Like, the, I mean, I was just like bong and a pig. Like, yeah, like, so, yeah, for sure, you know? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a fun memory. All right, are you ready to move on here? Yeah. To sauce number six, back half. This is the turmeric bomb. Okay. Chocolate ghost pepper. Yeah, that one's different. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, okay. And kind of another level, you know? Yeah. I'm definitely feeling on the back of the throat more. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely and a in throat the front, scratcher. The front, too. Yeah. From all sides, yeah. Getting warm. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Mm. Well, this, is, this is more fun than I thought. I'm like, okay. This is, <laughs> I mean, I know we're going to be hurting. Yeah. But, like, okay. So it's, far, it's, it's a vibe. Fun. Well, it's fun to, like, really taste it, right? And not yeah. just have it be about it, me looking silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there's a really nice comment in the Paul Dano breaks down his most iconic characters segment that you did for GQ, which reads, Paul Dano has one of the best curatorial instincts in the industry. It's a good sign when you see his name on a poster, not just because you know he'll crush the performance, but also because he picks the best movies to star in. I know this question is a bit in the abstract, but how would you best describe the science behind picking and sequencing roles for yourself? Well, that's nice. I didn't hear that before. Somebody said so. Somebody said that. That's nice. Um, uh, I think I've just always really gotten off though on like the whole thing, meaning that it's not just about the character and not just about me, but it's like who are you in it with? What are you making? And are you excited to like potentially see that? But I do think even when I was younger, I would probably lean towards, frankly, a, if maybe even a smaller part, if I thought the thing was really. And I don't know why, except that that was me. I don't know that it always felt good or sane or like a, a way to build a career or something. So after doing the Batman, first of all, if Steven had asked me to do anything, I would have done it. But like the fact that Burt is so different from the Riddler, it was like what I needed. A gear shift. Yeah, right? Like that's good for me. It's like, okay, I've done this, you know, uh, more operatic, uh, you know, psycho thing. And now this like really, contained, decent, you, you know, that I couldn't dream up. Like it just luckily worked out that way. It's it's like, uh, do you, I don't know if you get this. Sometimes I get this when I eat like a lot of sushi, like really good raw fish yeah. or there's like a, a slight high. Listen, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I almost think that's like why I'm still doing the show 19 seasons yeah, yeah, later. Yeah. I'm like chasing the dragon with that kind of like hot yeah. sauce head high that you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's why I was like Get a little like it's, sort of weightlessness nice, feeling. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It feels nice. It's, it's really, it's nice. The Cosmic. Disco. Good label. Ah, oh, what's you taking that breath? <laughs> I like your hand rub after every bite that you take. Yeah. <laughs> Observe it. I know, but that's get that's getting that's getting somewhere. Yeah. We're yeah. getting uh, granular over here, but yeah, that's yeah. Ooh. It's getting good. And I think like it's funny because I was kinda it has a sweetness up front. Yeah. Oh, you gotta rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's See, getting there. Yeah, you kind of forget. You kind of forget, and then it has that sweetness up front, so you almost like oh, it does. forget it's, about it's it. It's all in the back. And then I it's mean, all, The tip yeah. of my tongue is... Backloaded. <laughs> it's getting there. So I've always been intrigued by an actor's transition to directing, a leap that you made in 2018 with your directorial debut, Wildlife. 
how would you define like a good actor's director? Like, are there qualities that you tried to absorb from directors that you enjoyed working with in the past to help inform your approach when you took the seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. And that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, um, uh, that's one of the advantages as a quote first time director that I really had, right? I've seen how people do it and you can take, you know, you take something for the road with you and you're like, oh, oh, yeah, that's, oh, it's tingly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think one of the things I was most looking forward to about directing was creating like how I wanted my set to feel. I always call it like a temperature, like each set has a different temperature. I really like when you walk from your trailer to a set and you can feel like the energy change. You know, maybe sometimes you bring that but I think with certain directors, you know, it's like, uh, on There Will Be Blood, like, you know, that, that set had a temperature, and that's a good feeling. And, I mean, I can feel my nose dripping. I brought, yeah. I brought a burp <laughs> rag. I brought my kid's burp rag in, in case I needed it. Well, it's a good thing you did, apparently. Yeah, okay. <sighs> and you might need it for this next one. Yeah. Which is the bomb beyond insanity. And this is here every year. Look how observant you are. Yeah, every single year this we've the one. Uh, kept it around. Yeah, it's the one, and right. you'll see why. I know this is one of the ones that I want my uh, beloved <laughs> publicist over here to try. Out right, you know what? Too. That doesn't happen enough. <laughs> that doesn't happen enough when guests come in. You know. All right. Oh, diving right in. Okay, that one's. Pretty good. I mean, wow. Oh, it's intense, it right? I got the oh, there you go. It's happening. Oh, man. You know, we were talking about like the tails before. Like this one, I feel like just leaves scorched earth, you know? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was waiting for this moment when I got the hiccups. Woo! Oh no, we need time to think of the other one here. Oh, okay. I know. I know. So, director okay. Bong Joon Ho once joked that Korean movie audiences have come to celebrate you for your strong chin, and there are more than just a few viral supercuts with titles like Paul Dano gets beat up a lot. What are the hallmarks of a good fight sequence, in your opinion? Like, is there a real art to getting slapped around on camera? this movie called Night and Day. And Tom Cruise is in it. I was about to, but... Uh, should we? Nah. Does it... I mean, you're the pro. You and I want... You said you were going to mirror me. You I, reached for this first. You know what, though? I did it instinctively. You know what I mean? I, know. I did that, yeah. Well, that felt nice in the moment. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens now because it's already coming back. But right. okay. So, <laughs> Cruz, Cruz. We gotta talk about Cruz. <laughs> so, watching him do stunts was truly an informative moment because I saw how much he thought about what the audience is going to feel, and literally the impact they're going to feel. What is like felt. And that's the beauty of those Mission Impossible movies, right? Compared to the CGI fest, you feel those stunts, right? Yeah, I mean, even like Top Gun, like him actually getting in the jet, you know, and flying that around. I think it's fantastic. Like you feel it and he's working hard to give that to you. So it was the first time I think I really, cause again, I was probably, I came more from like, all right, my first film was an indie drama, like whatever, like, I was like, okay, like that's the art. You know, it's like, whoa, okay, Cruise, you know. I mean, I feel it on the outside of my mouth. Now. Yeah, where's the where's the head high at at this point? You know, that's different. Yeah, I think, I think this one kind of grounded me a little bit, <laughs> and just kind of really was about the 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 more physiological, physiological not exactly. psychological. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets worse. Let's see, unique garlic. Sean, don't be afraid to wait. There you go. I was waiting for you to. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you self conscious about it. I'm right here with you. Right here with you. Oh, yeah. 
we got it. We got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between films like Okja and Swiss Army Man, what would you say is the seminal fart scene of your movie career? There aren't many actors who can credibly answer a question Sean, I've like always that. been wanted to, to be asked this question. <laughs> when people say to me, is there anything that we haven't asked that you'd like us to? I always think, I wish they would ask me about what my most important fart on camera is. Yeah. The opening of Swiss Army Man is definitely one of my favorite scenes that I've gotten to film. You know, the the intent was, can the first fart make you laugh and the last fart make, make you, you cry? cry? And I thought, by God, if <laughs> we could do that. Now, I don't know that we did, but I thought, well, if, we're go if you're gonna work towards something in your life, that's, that's something to work towards. Now, am I forgetting because you mentioned other things. Am I forgetting about other film film, film farts? Because, of course, the first thing oh, I think of is Oh, well, you know what? Swiss Actually, I do have a follow-up. Because, you know, yeah. I apologize for this line of questioning, but in a 2007 interview with Playbill, you called your biggest onstage mishap a rather audible fart I let go, but was able to use it in a scene. Do you happen to remember that production? I mean, it was a 15-year-old interview. Sean, I just try to use, you know, <laughs> what's happening in the moment, you know? Uh, but also, like, yeah, that's funny. I mean, you know, we, we I've got a four-year-old, so tooting is a big uh, point of humor in our house. You know, it's <laughs> great. You know, it's, it's like yeah. a through line, you know? You know, it's, it's followed you from your career yeah. to home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it belongs. So this one you pour? Hold on a second. I think I got to finish off my look, though. Cause oh, yeah, so you got a whole... Oh, so there so we I'm go. sweating too much. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it really. Okay. All right. Extra sauce. Here we go. So pour it on the wood. <laughs> That's what I do. You know, I've, I've messed up going straight to wing too many times. Okay. Dab that nice little fat corner of the wing there. And I guess we really go for it, huh? Let's go for it. You know, it's the finale. All right. And then this one, kind of nice up front, little peppery, a little bit weird, mm -hmm. but then nice long tail. Oh, I have yeah. a time delay. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And again, what's this? It's, I feel it on the outside of my face. Yeah, yeah. I have a full numbing of the lips. Yeah. But somehow, yeah. we've made it through this winding spice journey together. Yeah. We've talked about your commitment to prep, your rigorous approach to every role. But I imagine being an actor sometimes is like taking on the wings of death. As analytical, as much of a plan as you can have, when it all comes down to it, sometimes you just gotta jump in and take a bite. Throw caution to the wind. So to close things out with your brain on fire, yeah. your mouth ablaze, how much of the acting experience, in your opinion, is just being able to say, fuck it, when the director says action? Oh, that's great. And you know what? It's true. Like, man. I do not think the first thing I want to do is embarrass myself, but you gotta be willing to embarrass yourself. It's just like, you know, it's like, fuck, you just might embarrass yourself. You really, you know, that's it. And lesson learned, I mean, I've been doing this for a while and Steven's film last year, there were times when I would just have to say, I'm just gonna have to do it on action, you know, like, you know, and, and you just, it's gonna come out. You just have to trust, you know, cause you do all this work. Some of that is, I mean, it's all going towards it. Some of it is, frankly, like, you're just trying to build up a reservoir of stuff to let out. But, you you know, confidence, too. It's like, okay, I'm Bert, you know, and whatever it takes for you to believe that. But, yeah, you just kind of ultimately have to let go. And it's taken me a long time to get to that place of, of trusting, like, something will come out today, Paul. And let's go, let's go hopefully let, let it out, let it happen. And you know what? Something was let out today, Paul. Coming in here, taking on the Hot Ones gauntlet oh. and putting an exclamation point on season 19. Woo. Now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Uh, like uh, like in my life right now, like Paul, personally? Or like movies and stuff. Uh, yeah, okay, I got a baby. Uh, 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 <laughs> No, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. See the, f I mean the, fa the Fablemans, man. So I think Stevens. It's, I think it's really good. I really like it. I think, I think you should check it out. That's it. <laughs> good job. All right, I'm gonna have another sip of this. Yeah.
really fun and good, oh. and good questions. Mm. Thorough. I like it. You get people in a vulnerable place and ask a real question. <laughs> <laughs> try to try to get something out of me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much for watching today's video. And Hot Ones fans, I have a very exciting announcement. The Hot Ones Shake Shack collab is finally here. The Hot Ones cheese fries, the Hot Ones burger, the Hot Ones chicken, all made with a shack sauce that includes Hot Ones the classic along with the last dab. It's very spicy, it's very delicious, and it's available for a limited time. Now through the end of the year at Shake Shacks nationwide and via the Shake Shack app. Be careful around your eyes and don't forget to order a milkshake. Uh.